crazy that only a half hour drive away we were in a city and now it looks like a mix between Cappadocia in Turkey or Matera in Italy. We've spent the last six weeks exploring Peru, but yesterday we caught a very luxurious train and a not so luxurious bus and crossed the border into Bolivia. Today, we are exploring the highest city <laughs> in the world, La Paz. Good morning from La Paz, Bolivia. Yesterday we caught a day bus that took us from Puno, Peru, around Lake Titicaca to here. And we spent the rest of the day exhausted in our room. <laughs> I only know two things for sure about La Paz. One is that there is a witch's market here. And the second is that it's one of the highest capital cities in the entire world. It sits at like 3,600 meters elevation. We've got a bunch of things planned today. We're gonna to see that witch's market. We're gonna eat some food. We're going to... Oh, we see the moon? We're going to the moon. We're going to the moon. <laughs> but I think first we're going to get a good bird's eye view of the city from the local public transport. <laughs> Normally catching public transport is not massive on our list, but here... In Bolivia, public transport is a cable car. Not just any cable car, one of the highest cable cars in the world, right? What? Imagine just getting this every day to work. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! This is just public transport, that's crazy. It's crazy to think about this ticket, like I'm pretty sure return for both of us was six Bolivian dollars. Bolivianos. Bolivianos, which is wow. next. Wow! which is next to nothing, especially when you compare it to the last cable car we got, which I'm pretty sure was in Squamish. One way down was like $25. I think that's more. Crazy. The view is nuts. It's either buildings all the way up a mountain or this really rugged... It looks like Cappadocia. It does. implemented because the traffic within La Paz was terrible. So they built cable cars and the journey, <laughs> I hate those bits, the journey went from an hour down to 10 minutes. How crazy is that? It also then just like incredibly rapidly expanded and now there's like 10 different cable car lines. We were meant to be on the red line, but everything's really yellow. So I think we might be on the yellow line. <laughs> I don't really know where we're going. It's gonna be fun to find out. To be fair, we're not taking this to get somewhere. We're literally gonna get back on and go back down where we were. It's supposed and to be this, view. Yeah, this line has the best view. Yeah. I mean, I have nothing to compare it to, but this is that. <laughs> so far. goes to show how massive La Paz is. Like, it's so big. I remember being like, Quito's massive. I don't know, I don't know which one's bigger, but this one looks like it's spread out really far. It's wild to me when you look at the mountains though, because sometimes it's <laughs> mountain, and it looks like the mountain is just made of buildings. Yeah. Like, you can't see that it's a mountain, it's just buildings all the way up. to stay on but apparently there's a good view around here so we got kicked off that's fine happy to get a good view this is a popular station there's heaps of people getting on here oh it's like a hub station yeah crazy it's just crazy that there's snow-capped mountains in the background <laughs> one over and then we take the purple line one down 
and we should be as close to the witch's market as we can get. Right? Yeah. Still without any Wi-Fi or any maps though, so I don't know how we're gonna get to the witch's market, but we'll be physically close. the best start to a day in the city. I love it so much, it's really pumping me up. And every building is color coded to which line represents, like what line is moving on it. So we're about to go on the purple line because we're in the purple building. So steep and far. We noticed La Paz, even like when we first got in here, it's an incredibly busy yeah, city. Man. Like Monday and a midday when we got in, there were so many people just on the streets and like every street yeah. as well. It's got a good vibe. is full of surprises just on our way to the witch's market the only reason i'm pretty sure this isn't the witch's market is because there's no alpaca fetuses <laughs> it's really colorful and beautiful though yeah alpaca fetuses comes next yay this is so cool wasn't on the plan today which is kind of a fun thing about when we haven't planned a day out you get these colorful surprises on our way to one thing that we know about So this is one of the most iconic things to be found in the witch's market. It is a dried alpaca fetus and it's most commonly used I believe in like rituals for Pachamama which is like the mountain earth goddess in the Andes. It's also apparently typically used for new buildings. They bury one underneath the construction site and it's to bring good luck and blessings and all of that good stuff. So under every single one of these buildings there's probably buried one of these. Just us. Turns out that this street that we're on and the looping street we were just on before is all the witches market. I just don't think everything's quite open yet, maybe. It's so much fun and so colourful though. I'm kind of glad not everything's open though, because yeah. even just seeing those couple of little baby llamas, I'd prefer to just look at the colourful clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Something to eat? This feels really local. There's so many cafes and juice places. <laughs> <laughs> Food, nice views, so local. This is wild. It's like all these tiny stalls that are no bigger than two meters by two meters, and each level is a different thing. So I think the bottom level was like produce, second level, I don't know, third level was like snacks, and the fourth level where we are is like tea, coffee, full meals. Genuinely feels a lot like a parking garage that they've just retrofitted into a massive local, mostly food market. You get three turns and you have to get us to the food we want. Pick wisely. Doesn't count as a turn because we're going straight. Okay. Yeah, I could use a juice as well. Ah, oh, changing the rules of the game. We're pausing the game of three turns to find the saltinas to get a juice. Wow! That's yes. A huge juice. This place is decorated so cute as well. There's like a really old retro TV and everything fits perfectly in its little container. It's old like Coke bottles and fake fruit. You picked a good one. It tastes like blended up mango. <laughs> Two turns left. 
This way? This way. This way. <laughs> Honestly, the three turn thing usually works for us. We just channel where something is and we end up finding it. But not here. We did ask our juice lady and she seemed to think there wasn't any here. In broken Spanish, she might have been like saying, yeah, they're everywhere. But <laughs> either way, we're moving on to the next place. But I don't think we're going to end this video without trying one of these saltinas. <laughs> This is where the difficulty comes in with not having data because we could just order an Uber to the next destination which is outside of the city but we don't have data to do that so we're going to try and figure out a taxi Or another way, maybe a bus Stop trying to get us on a bus Another thing we've noticed and we love about La Paz is the crossing, walking crossing. The green man that's usually walking has like a really nice running animation. It's nice, high quality. Honestly, it's almost like the running man dance. Half hour ride, I think, to Moon Valley. This place is nuts! I feel bad. We have made it to probably the thing I was looking forward to most out of this entire day, Valley of the Moon. The landscape here is just wild. It's crazy that only a half hour drive away we were in a city. And now it looks like a mix between Cappadocia in Turkey or Matera in Italy. So cool and it looks like we're the only ones here. normally way more planned out than today when it comes to traveling and we like to look up some history and facts about all of the places we're going to go during a day. Today the only fact that I know is Valle de la Luna or Moon Valley got its name because in 1960 Neil Armstrong came to visit. He made a comment <laughs> that it looked like the moon. It's called Valley of the Moon. is incredible here it is also incredibly hot coming at the peak heat of the day was probably not the best idea <laughs> turns out there are two hike options when you come to moon valley one is a quick 15 minute walk the other is 45 minutes we're kind of debating what to do because it is brutal the heat here but when are we going to be back i'm hungry john wants to go that way but 45 minutes isn't too bad. Dean? Okay. Honestly, the similarities between this and Love Valley in Cappadocia, they're so similar. As if the rock formations themselves wasn't crazy enough, this behind me looks like something from the Cars movie. And then, that red rock looks like something from Arizona. It's so wild. I'm starving now. Jordan really wanted to get a Colectivo back from Valley of the Moon to La Paz. But if I'm honest, that sort of experience brings out all of my anxieties while we're traveling. Like it's something we don't really understand, a language we don't speak, heaps of people unorganized. 
Like it just, even the thought of it makes me a bit anxious, so we're getting a taxi back instead. Gracias. Okay. So, finally we found a place that actually sells saldanas. What they are is effectively a Bolivian empanada that originates in Argentina. Apparently the design of it comes from a town in Argentina called Saltan or something along those lines, but Bolivians love them so much that it's kind of like a Bolivian food now. We went into like five or six different bakeries and they all had empanadas. And I think the difference between an empanada and a salteña is that the salteña sort of almost has this burnt edge to it. So as soon as we were walking in, I was like, I think that's an empanada. And every single time it was. But 50th time's the charm. This place is actually called the salteña. <laughs> we accidentally asked for takeaway because we didn't know that there was this really good seating area upstairs, but I think we're gonna stay. What's the proper way? You're supposed to bite the tops of the juice. I like bite there. Or no, bite at the top. Yeah. Are you sure? Uh huh. Ooh. Did they get the spicy roll? <laughs> Maybe that one's yours. <laughs> spicy, spicy. <laughs> Feels so weird drinking soup. I'm so confused. It tastes good though. I'm pretty sure that one's yours because that's so spicy. Mm. The dough is so crispy and delicious. That is, you're gonna love that. It's so spicy. It's so confusing. It's like a little bit sausage rolly, a little bit of soup, a little bit empanada. Yum. My lip is literally tingling. I haven't got the spice yet. How did you get the spice? Barely touching it. Oh, here it comes. I got a little bit. It's really nice. The meat is really, really tender. I think there's little bits of like onion in there and I don't know what that is, but it might be cheese. It is hot. There's probably a good level of spice. It's definitely not like crazy spicy like Emily made it out to me. <laughs> My spice tolerance is way low. Uh, what a way to finish our time in La Paz. We only really had one full day here, but I think we made the most of it pretty well. Next thing we're doing in Bolivia, Salt flats and another overnight bus to get there. Yay! Yay! I'm so happy about it. I can't wait. Actually, this one looks quite nice. <laughs> that it's called Moon Valley because Neil Armstrong was here and said it kind of looked like the surface of the moon. <laughs> it smells so good. It smells so good. It smells so good.